Hi, my name is Janie, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Google Drawing mosaic. So first I just wanted to show you a couple of pictures of mosaics in general. Um, they are drawings or patterns that are made out of little tiny pieces, and they could be all the same style, like maybe little squares or triangles, or you can have irregular shapes or different shapes mixed together. Here's another example here. Um, and so typically, they're made out of ceramic or stone. You might see them on a floor or on a wall. And uh, they're held together with plaster or mortar, typically. And it's a style that was very popular in ancient Rome. Here's another example where you could see, you know, this one has little circles and little rectangles. So you can make it however you like. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to make it digital. And we're going to use Google Drawing to make a mosaic. And so what I'm going to show you in, in a minute is that you can add a picture or a drawing and then use little shapes on top of it to make your mosaic. Here's a couple more examples. Uh, this is one that I made um, from a picture of my kitty cat sleeping on the bed. OK, so let's get started. So first, you're going to want to go to your Google Drive. Um, and so what you're going to do is open another tab. And then if you go to the nine little squares here to your Google Apps launcher, you can select Google Drive right here. And so then I'm going to go to New. And I don't see Google Drawing here, so I have to hover over the word More and then move to the right and then select it. And that'll open up a Google Drawing. And one thing that's really cool about Google Drawings is that they auto save just like any other Google application that you use. I'm going to go ahead and name this my Google Drawing Mosaic. And then the first thing we can do is color in this background. Right now, um, it's going to be clear if we download it. Um, but I want to fill it in. And whatever I choose as a background will kind of be like the color that comes out between our shapes, kind of like um, that mortar uh, that goes between the pieces. So you can choose um, if I go again, I right clicked and then you go to background. Um, so I could choose a solid color or there's another tab here for gradient, which kind of has a few different tones of the same color. And you could choose anything you like. Here's gray and I have different shades of gray or maybe I want to choose purple and have different shades of purple or you could do solid if you like. Now that I have a background, I'm going to add some kind of an image. So there's a few ways you can do this. I go to insert and then choose image. And here are my choices. So for example, the one I did, I had a picture in my Google Drive. So I could choose Google Drive. Or if you're on a PC or a Mac, you could upload from your computer. If you're on a Chromebook, you might choose Google Drive if you have pictures in there. And then I see it loading right here. And so I recently added a picture. Or you could go to my drive and search in there. But here's the one that I want. And I could either drag it in or I could click on it one time and go to insert and it'll put your picture in there. And so whatever kind of picture you add, I like to drag it so that it goes right in this corner. So I'm going to move it, just click and drag. And then I'm going to pull it by the corner to fill in the rest. So it kind of just doesn't fill in the bottom though. And the reason I want to pull it from the corner is I don't want to change the proportions. I don't want to smush it or stretch it out. If I accidentally pull it from the middle here, you see how it kind of makes it longer that way? If you make a mistake, you can always click Control Z to undo. And you could do it, it as many times as you need to to go back to the step that you want. So I'm going to pull the corner to fill it in. And then since I have too much space here on the bottom, I could click on my background or we also call it the canvas. And then I see some little lines on the bottom uh, right corner. And I could click and drag that to adjust the size of my canvas. So I want the canvas to be filled up by my picture. Um, and so that's what we want to do. Now, just a couple other ways. If you don't have a picture, you could go to New, More, Google Drawing, right? add your background, whatever you want. And then I could instead of adding something from Google Drive, I could just search the web or I could use the camera. So maybe you want to do a mosaic of yourself. So once I do the camera tool, 
I can just take a picture of me. Or if I did a fabulous drawing and I want to make a mosaic of it, I could just hold up the paper and take a picture. So there I am. You could take a few pictures if you want and then choose the one you like. And then the same thing, I would adjust it to fill up here. If I decide not to use my picture, I could click on it and delete. The other thing you could do is insert image and search the web. If you're searching for a picture, I would recommend searching for something colorful like a flower or some kind of an animal or something in nature. So I'm going to try to search for a colorful bird. And here I have a few good ones that I could choose from. I'm just going to choose this first one and drag it in. And I'll adjust the size here. And I'll click on the canvas to get rid of that little extra space. And now I'm ready to begin. So once you have your background and the picture you want, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to make little shapes over the picture. And there's different tools you could use, but I really like the polyline tool. Uh, but you could also use shape. So if I click on shape, I could, for example, make this whole thing uh, out of triangles. And you have a few choices you could choose. Uh, but I like the flexibility of being able to make my own shapes, um, irregular shapes. So I'm going to go over to this line tool. And um, there's a little triangle right next to it that brings up a drop down. And that's where you'll find polyline. Basically, with the polyline tool, the way it works is I can click and then move my mouse. And you might see that there's a little blue line. So wherever I click, it makes like a little corner. And so if I want like a triangle, I could click. And then you want to bring the shape back together. And once you close the shape, you have this um, space that you could fill. And so I'm going to delete it and draw this over here. But I just wanted to show how it works. And oh, if you want to make like a curve, for example, if you want it more curved instead of uh, hard edges like this, you just need to do more clicks. So for example, if I want to make a curve shape, I can click and then move a little and then click and then move a little like and making the curve click, click, click and making a curve shape and then I could seal it back together. So that's how you use the polyline tool. I'm going to click whenever you're, you're done using it and you want to either fill it in or delete a mistake. I can go back to this little arrow and that's my selector tool. And so now you could see this is selected. I can just use the backspace to delete it. Now I'm going to click on this one to select it and use the backspace to delete it. Or you could also undo with control Z. So now I'm going to make some little shapes here on my bird. And so I'm going to go back and select the polyline tool. I can tell it's not selected because when I move my cursor around, I see that little arrow. So I'm going to go back here and select it. And when it's selected, you should see this little plus sign. So now I like to focus on one color at a time and then fill in that color. And sometimes when you make one shape and you select your colors, it'll remember those. And so you could just keep drawing shapes. It makes it go a little faster. So I'm going to select just this dark green area. And then maybe I want to do bright green and then maybe blue and then maybe a slightly different blue over here. So I'm going to start by clicking and clicking and kind of making a little round shape. And I think I'm going to make kind of triangular, maybe like a little like a little flame shape, maybe. And uh oh, I made a mistake here. It didn't seal my shape. If that happens to you and it's like, ah, oh, how do I get this unstuck? You can just go back to the selector tool and then either click delete or undo and try it again. That kind of happens a lot. Um, especially if you're trying to do a little small shape, a tiny shape. And one another tip that you can do is you can zoom in. So when I'm making really small shapes, I like to zoom in and I go to this little drop down here next to the magnifying glass. And maybe you want to do 200 or if you want to zoom in even more, you could go to that little drop down and click zoom in again and it'll zoom in even more. Maybe that's a little too zoomed in. So I'm going to zoom out. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go back to the polyline tool. And I'm going to click and make a shape here just so that we can keep going with this. And now I have my shape. So when I'm done making a shape, I go to the selector tool. And now that it's selected, I can fill it in with this paint bucket. And I could also change 
the color of the border with that little pencil next to the paint bucket. So I'm going to try to match this color. And so I can kind of click around here and see hmm, what looks good, what looks close to that color. If I can't get a color cl quite close enough, you could also choose the closest one and then go to custom. And you'll be able to click around here to try to match it better. Maybe this one was a little, yeah, maybe I like that one, that shade a little better. As you click around, you'll see it change here. <clears throat> when you find one you like, click OK. I think that's OK. And now I see the selector is, um, it's, it's highlighted here blue. So I know I'm not using the polyline tool. So if I want to keep going, I need to select, select the polyline again. And now I can keep drawing. <clears throat> now I forgot to change my uh, border color. So let's take a look at that. So um, I could, you know, once I select my colors and I get them how I want, you see how it's kind of, it remembers the colors I picked. I could just keep going. So that'll make it go a lot faster. Maybe I want some more shapes here. <clears throat> But let's say if I had wanted to change that border color, I, when I go to the selector tool and select a shape, I could have clicked here on that border color and chosen a different color. And so <clears throat> it's probably best if when you make your first shape, you make the color exactly how you want. That way it keeps remembering the colors you chose and you don't have to go back and fix each and every one. But it's up to you, whatever color you want to use as your border color, whatever background, use whatever you like. I would probably suggest uh, keeping the same border color for all the pieces, though. So now maybe I'm done with this color. Maybe I want more bright green here. So I'm going to make some more shapes here. And since I'm changing colors, I'm going to need to go to that selector tool and then just change it to a different shade. So maybe I want that color for the next few pieces. I'll go back to the polyline tool and make a few more shapes. And it should remember the last color that I chose. And one thing very important, do you notice I'm leaving some space between the shapes? Um, you want to make sure you leave space. So just like a, a mosaic, right, you'll see um, like here, you can see there's black between all the pieces. So you want to leave um, that color between it, just like you might see the uh, plaster or mortar on a real uh, mosaic. <clears throat> and then you would just keep going. And, you know, once you get to the next color, switch colors again and keep going. This does uh, take quite a bit of time. Uh, but it looks really cool when it's done. Um, another tip I have is um, to use the polyline tool to highlight large pieces. So for example, when you get to the beak here, um, I might go to the polyline tool and make like a good curve. Like I'm going to keep clicking and I might just uh, highlight this whole beak here. And so I'm going to keep going around. And so for the upper upper part of the beak, I might just select that whole thing just so that it stands out. And then I can switch the color. And then I could go and select the bottom part of the beak here. And so one thing that happens when you select these large pieces is that they stand out. And remember to leave space between your pieces. So now that beak really stands out. But maybe for the feathers, I want to make smaller pieces. Another thing I like to do, for example, uh, on this one, because my, my cat is black, but I'm not going to make this all the same color. Um, one thing I notice with this one is that here the light is hitting his fur and it actually looks a little different. So what I did on my mosaic was I went through and I chose one color, like I did all the highlights that were white first. And then I was like, okay, this is a little bit darker. I'll do this and then this is really dark I'll do that color and so it ended up looking let me show you it ended up looking like this when I was done and so here was you know where the light was hitting and then you know there were some red tones around his nose and ears and so that's one way you could make a picture stand out that is all one color I would look at the shading this one is almost all the way done 
but I haven't removed the, the picture that was underneath it. So I'm going to show you that part. So the way you do that is I'm going to zoom in because what I want to do is click on the picture in the back, but <clears throat> every time I try to click on it because there's so many little pieces, it highlights one piece. So what you can do is zoom in. And now I'm going to try to click on the background and you see it didn't, it looks like it didn't select anything. But if I scroll up, I can see that the whole picture is selected. And so once you click on the background, you know, between the pieces, click the delete key on your keyboard. And now I can see the background I chose. And if I choose maybe, oh, maybe I don't really like this color as much as I thought. I can zoom in a little bit more just so I could make sure I can right click on the background. So mine was green. And then I could go to background and change it if I want. Maybe I chose a solid green. Maybe I wanted a purple now. Let's see, how does that look? I'll zoom out. Yeah, maybe I like that. And if I don't like it, I can right click on the background again and go to the backgrounds and choose another color and then find the one that I really like. And then I'll zoom out to 100%. And I think that's what how I'm going to keep it. That's how I like it. Doesn't it look cool? And then what you could do, this auto saves in your Google Drive. But what you could also do is you could go to file and then download as a JPEG or a PNG to make it into an image file. And so maybe I also wanted to save it as a JPEG. And then, you know, you could use that to put in your Google Doc or on a uh, website, whatever you want. And so here it is as now it's an image file. Anyway, that is how you make a Google Drawing Mosaic. I hope you enjoy it. Have fun.